Now we come to the next sutta, 10.177. This is about transference of merit. Uh. Now the Brahmin Janusoni came to see the Exalted One, paid homage and sat down to one side. Uh. Then he said to the Exalted One, Master Gotama, let me tell you, we Brahmins uh, give charitable gifts. We make the Shraddha offerings to the dead, saying, May this gift to my relatives and blood relations who are dead and gone be of profit. May our kinsmen and blood relations who are dead and gone enjoy this offering. Master Gotama, does that gift profit our kinsmen and, dead and blood relatives dead and gone? Do they really enjoy that gift? I'll stop here for a moment. So you, you see from here uh, that these Brahmins, uh, when their relative passes away, uh, they want to do some merit, some good for their relative. So they offer these, uh, uh, this food. Uh, and their custom uh, is that they burn the food, you know. They burn whatever they offer, they burn. And he's not sure, this man is not sure that whether his relative actually gets the offering or not. So the Buddha said, Well, Brahmin, if there be ground for it, it does profit them, but not if there be no ground. Here, ground, you could say condition. Uh, if there is the condition, they will get it. Uh. And then he asked, Master Gotama, what is ground and what is no ground? And the Buddha said, Here in Brahmin, a certain one takes life, takes what is not given. In sexual desires is a wrongdoer, is a slanderer, of bitter speech, an idle babbler covetous, harmful in thought, and wrong in view. When body breaks up, after death, he rises up again in hell. There he subsists on food proper to dwellers in hell. On that he is grounded. This Brahmin is the no ground, standing on which that gift profits him not. Uh, stop here for a moment. Uh. So here the Buddha is saying that if a person is reborn in hell, uh, he... Uh, he subsists uh, or he, he, he maintains himself uh, with the food uh, found in hell uh, and he cannot get the food that is offered by his relative. Uh. Now one thing you find in the teachings of the Buddha uh, that all beings uh, must have food. Uh. All beings uh, survive with food. Uh. Even you are born as a deva, a heavenly being, also you need food. You are born in hell, also you need food. Born as an animal or ghost, also you need food. Just as humans need food. Hmm? Then the Buddha continues. Uh, Herein again, a certain one takes life, etc. He, when body breaks up after death, rises up again in the womb of an animal. There also he subsists on food proper to creatures so born. On that he is grounded. This also, Brahmin, is no ground. Whereon standing, that gift profits him not. Uh, stop here for a moment. So, you see, uh, a person born in the animal realm also cannot get the help uh, that his relative wants to give him. Then the Buddha continues. Yet again, a certain one abstains from taking life, from taking what is not given, from wrong conduct in sexual desires, from falsehood, from slander, from bitter speech, from idle gossip. He is not covetous. His thoughts are not harmful and he has right view. When body breaks up b after death, he rises up again in the company of human beings. There he subsists on food proper to human beings. On that he is grounded. But this also, Brahmin, is no ground, standing, whereon standing, that gift profits him not. Uh, stop here for a moment. Uh. So, uh, a person born as a human being, uh, as somebody's baby, uh, when the previous life uh, relative is doing some uh, meritorious deed for him also he cannot get. Here this one you find a person keeps the precepts uh, and has right view uh, and is born as a human being. What is right view here? Right view here uh, is worldly right view, uh, mundane right view. That means believe in karma. Uh, in ko, uh, believes in uh, karma vipaka. Uh. And then the Buddha continues. Uh, Yet again, a certain one abstains from taking life and the rest, and he has right view. 
When body breaks up beyond uh, after death, he rises up again in the company of devas or heavenly beings. There he subsists on food proper to devas. On that he is grounded. This also Brahmin is no ground standing on which that pro- gift profits him not. Uh, stop here for a moment. So if a person is born in the heavens, uh, also he does not get the merit uh, that his relative is doing for him. But then in heaven he does not need also. Uh, and then the Buddha continues. Here again, Brahmin, a certain one takes life, etc., and has wrong view. When body breaks up after death, he rises up again in the realm of the ghosts, Peta. There he subsists on whatever be the food proper to beings in that realm. On that he is grounded. Whatsoever offerings his friends and fellows or kinsmen and blood relations convey to him, on that he subsists, on that he is grounded. This indeed, Brahmin, is the ground standing on which that gift is of profit to him. I'll stop here for a moment. So you find, uh, if a person is reborn as a ghost, a peta, then he does get what his relative offers to him. Uh. Then the, 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 the Brahmin asks, But, Master Gotama, suppose that this blood relation who is dead and gone has not reached that place, the realm of the ghost. Who then enjoys that offering? And the Buddha said, In that case, Brahmin, other blood relations, dead and gone, who have reached that place, the realm of ghosts, enjoy it. And then he asked, But suppose, Master Gotama, that both that blood relation and the others who are dead and gone have not reached that place, that ghost realm, eh? who then enjoys that offering? And the Buddha said, That Brahmin is impossible. It cannot come to pass that that place should be empty for so long a time of blood relations, dead and gone. Anyhow, Brahmin, he who offers to the dead and gone is not without reward. Uh, let's, let's stop here this sutta. This sutta continues a bit more, but then uh, it is not important at all, so I don't want to read it. So here the Buddha is saying uh, that our our relatives uh, who have passed away and reborn in the ghost realm, uh, when we do uh, good deeds uh, for, for them, uh, uh, they should be able to get it. Uh. And not only the recent blood, uh, recent relatives who have passed away, even other relatives, uh, maybe from the previous life, uh, who have passed away and uh, in the ghost realm, uh, they are probably waiting for us to, to, to help them. Uh. So that is why whenever we do any good deed, uh, we should transfer to all beings. Uh. Uh, sometimes if we are going to do a good deed, uh, especially for a relative who has recently passed away, uh, or for example, even if you move into a new house, and uh, as soon as you, before you move into that house, or as soon as you move into that house, uh, then you want to do this uh, dana, this offering, uh, and you want to transfer the merit, uh, then it's good uh, before you, you do that dana to tell uh, these uh, spirits, uh, uh, that you are going to do that dana on their behalf uh, because they have a ghost body they cannot do that dana so you tell them that you are doing it on their behalf that you will transfer the merit to them uh, then they will be very happy and they are waiting for you to do that dana so especially if you move into a new house uh, you want to be at peace with all the spirits in the house and all the neighboring spirits uh, the dato kong and everything so it is good to 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 make this dana for them and even if you are staying in an old house or so whenever you do any dana it's also good to tell them and transfer the merit to them then you your house will be quite peaceful yeah. this is quite an important sutta because uh, it shows that there is this act uh, that we do for our dead relative uh, and that they can benefit uh, uh, if they are reborn as ghosts, uh, but not if they are not reborn as ghosts. Now, the Buddha did not explain why only ghosts can get this uh, merit, but maybe it is because ghosts can come back. Uh, if a person is born in some other realm, uh, he does not come back. That's why, like Chinese believe, uh, after seven days of uh, passing away, the relative will come back. And sometimes there is evidence that they do come back. But if they do come back, then most probably they are born as ghosts. Uh, and they want you to know. Uh, that's why they maybe make, show some footsteps or make some noise in the house uh, uh, to, uh, to, to tell you to please help. Uh. 
Now today we are at this book of the tens. Ten point two zero five. The Buddha said, eh, "Monks, I will teach you Dhamma teaching. Dhamma teaching on crookedness or sneakiness. Do you listen to it? Pay attention carefully, and I will speak." <coughs> We will, sir," replied those monks to the exalted one, who said, "And what monks is Dharma teaching, which teaches about crookedness? Monks, beings are the owners of their karma, heirs to their karma, born of their karma, related to their karma, abide supported by their karma. Whatever karma they do, be it good or evil, of that they will be the heirs. In this connection, monks, a certain one takes life." He is a hunter, bloody-handed, given over to killing and slaying, void of compassion to all living creatures. He goes crookedly in body, crookedly in speech, crookedly in mind. His action with body is crooked. So is that with speech and mind. Crooked is his born, and crooked his rising up again in birth. Moreover, monks, for one whose born is crooked, whose rebirth is crooked. For him, there is one of two bonds: either downright woe in hell, or to be born in the womb of an animal, one that creeps crookedly along. And of what sort, monks, is that birth in the womb of an animal, one that creeps crookedly along? A snake, a scorpion, a centipede, a mongoose, a cat, a mouse, an owl. Or whatsoever other animal goes stealthily on seeing human beings. Herein again, a certain one takes what is not given. Is a wrongdoer in sensual desires. Is a liar, a slanderer, of bitter speech, of idle babble, covetous of harmful thoughts, of wrong view, of perverse view, holding that there is no gift. There is no gift, no offering, no sacrifice. There is no fruit or ripening of deeds, well done or ill done. This world is not; the world beyond is not. There is no father, no mother, no being supernaturally born in other worlds. There are no recluses and brahmanas or holy men、uh, in in the world who have gone the right way, who fare rightly. Men who, by their own comprehension, have realized this world and the world beyond, and declare thus: <coughs> He goes crookedly in body, speech, and mind. His actions with body, speech, and mind is crooked. His born is crooked. For one whose born is crooked, for him I declare that is one of two borns: either downright woe in hell, or to be born in the womb of an animal, a snake. A scorpion, a centipede, a mongoose, a mouse, a cat, an owl, or whatsoever other animal goes stealthily on seeing human beings. Monks, <coughs> beings are the owners of their karma, heirs to their karma, born of their karma, related to their karma, abide supported by their karma. Whatever karma they do, be it good or evil, of that they will be the heirs. Herein again, monks, a certain one abandons taking life, abstains therefrom. He lays aside the rod. He lays aside the knife. He dwells modest, charitable, feeling compassion for all living creatures. He goes not crookedly in body, speech, and mind. His action with body, speech, and mind is straight. Straightforward is his born, and straight his rebirth. Now, monks, for one whose born and rebirth are straight. I declare one of two bonds: either those heaven worlds that are utter bliss, or rebirth in whatsoever families are exalted, such as the families of nobles, of brahmins, or house fathers of great household, wealthy, of great resources, of great property, with great store of gold and silver, with great store of possessions, with great store of wealth and grain. Thus become monks is the rebirth of one who has come to be. What he does by that he is reborn. When reborn, appropriate context context such a one. Thus I declare that beings are the heirs of their deeds. Herein, again, monks, a certain one abandons taking what is not given. He abstains therefrom. 
He abandons wrong action in sensual desires. He abandons falsehood, slander, coarse speech or bitter speech, coveting. He is of harmless thoughts. He has right view. He holds the reasonable view that there is gift, that there is offering, sacrifice, that there is fruit and ripening of deeds done well or ill, that this world is, that the world beyond is, that there are mother and father and beings supernaturally born in other worlds, that in this world there are recluses and Brahmins who go the right way, who fare rightly, who by their own comprehension have realized both this world and the world beyond and so declare it. Such a one goes not crookedly in body, speech and mind. His action of body, speech and mind is straight, outright. Straightforward is his born and straight is rebirth. Now monks, for one who is born is straight, I declare one of two bonds, either those heavens that are utter bliss or rebirth in whatsoever families are exalted with great store of wealth and grain, etc. Indeed, monks, beings are the owners of their karma, heirs of their karma, born of their karma, related to their karma, abide supported by their karma. Whatever karma they do, be it good or evil, of that they will be the heirs. Such monks is the Dhamma teaching, the teaching about crookedness. Uh, that's the whole sutta. So here the Buddha is saying uh, that whatever nature we have, uh, we will be reborn uh, uh, in the same way. Uh. So if a person is uh, crooked, uh, he is um, one who is very uh, secretive, uh, he grows stealthily eh, along. Eh. He might be born as an animal eh, that is of such a nature. Eh. Uh, a snake, a scorpion, centipede, mongoose, cat, mouse, owl, uh, such type of creature. And if he does a lot of evil deeds, eh, he might even be reborn in hell. Here is mentioned eh, the ten deeds eh, which are evil karma. Three are of the body. Three body evil karma is killing, stealing, and committing adultery. Uh, these are the three evil body karmas. And then the verb, evil verbal karmas are four types. Uh. The first one is lying. The second one is carrying tales from A to B uh, and making uh, A and B quarrel. A person hears A talking bad about B. And then he goes to tell B, eh? A said such and such a thing about you. So B gets very angry and quarrels with A or fights with A. Eh? So he causes disharmony by carrying tales. Eh? Uh, that's the second type of evil verbal karma. The third type of evil verbal karma is coarse speech or harsh speech. Eh? Using foul words, uh, swearing and all that. Eh? Uh, always uh, talking very... Uh, heatedly, very angrily, like that. Huh? The fourth type of uh, evil uh, verbal karma is idle gossip. Idle gossip, talking a lot of nonsense, huh? uh, uh, frivolous words. Huh? No. So these are the four uh, evil karmas, huh? four verbal evil karmas. Then uh, there are three types of evil mental karmas. The first one is being over greedy, covetousness. That means greedy for other people's property. Mm. The second one is ill will, or having a lot of anger and hatred. Nah. Always uh, having a lot of ill will. Nah. Third one is having wrong view. Having wrong view means not believing in karma. Not believing uh, that uh, if you do good, you will get uh, happiness. That you do evil, you will suffer for it. And also not believing that there are holy men who have become enlightened and realize the truth about the nature of the world and not believing that there is another world after you pass away that there are heavenly beings and all other types of beings uh, in the other world uh. so uh, the ten good uh, karmas uh, are the opposite of the ten evil karmas and uh, refraining from killing refraining from stealing refraining from Se uh, sexual misconduct, uh, this uh, adultery, uh, refraining from lying, refraining from carrying tales and causing disharmony, 
refraining from core speech uh, uh, refraining from idle gossip and then uh, the opposite of covetousness which is uh, renunciation uh, not being greedy mm, renunciation then another one is uh, uh, not having ill will having a lot of good will having a lot of loving kindness uh, as, a, as the ninth uh, good uh, karma and the tenth one is having right view believing in karma believing that there is another world after you pass away believing that uh, there are holy men who have realized the truth uh. so the Buddha says uh, if we perform the ten evil karmas uh, we will be reborn the chances are that we will be reborn either in hell or as an animal and if you do the ten good karmas, eh? perform the ten good karmas, then the chances are that you may be reborn in heaven or at least as a human being. Now we go to the next sutta, 10.213. The Buddha said, eh? Monks, possessing forty qualities, one is cast into hell accordingly as he deserves. But forty, he takes life himself, encourages another to do so, approves of taking life, and speaks in praise of take of taking life. So here we we uh, stop here for a moment. Uh, so here you find uh, the first evil karma that will bring you to hell uh, is to kill, to take other living beings' life, lah. Uh. So here this person uh, does four things. Firstly, he kills. Secondly, he encourages others to kill. Thirdly, he approves of killing. Uh, sokong, uh, uh, approves of killing. And the fourth one, he praises killing of uh, other, other beings. Uh. So, the first one, by killing himself, he already performs a lot of evil karma. Secondly, if he encourages others to kill, again he performs more evil karma. Third one, he approves of other people killing, more evil karma. The fourth one, he praises the killing of be living beings, uh, then he gets more evil karma. Uh, so the first evil karma, there are, there are four ways of getting evil karma, killing, encouraging, approving and speaking in praise. So same with the other nine. Second one is uh, stealing, taking what is not given. Give, given. So he steals, he encourages others to steal, he approves of stealing and he speaks in praise of stealing. Uh, so the third one is committing adultery. He commits adultery himself and encourages others to do so, approves of it and speaks in praise of it. So every one of the evil karmas, uh, there are four ways of uh, getting more evil uh, karma la, or performing this evil karma so 4 times 10 na, you get 40 la. Uh, so I just uh, refresh your memory uh, what are these 10 evil karmas killing, stealing committing adultery, lying uh, carrying tales so that people quarrel and fight uh, uh, speaking coarse words rough words and then uh, idle gossip and then covetousness uh, greed for other people's things uh, another one is ill will or anger having a lot of anger and hatred and the last one is having wrong view uh, so each of these uh, if you perform them and then you encourage others to do approve of it and speak in praise of it uh, so you get these 40 evil karmas which will bring a person to hell. Uh, so we have to. So when we think of the reverse, eh, it's also the same. If you perform the ten good karmas, eh, and then you encourage people to also do these good uh, ten good karmas, eh, and you approve of it, and you speak in praise of it, then you get even more merit eh, than just doing it yourself. Eh. Mm.